Hi, my name is Max, and today I want to talk about undefined behavior in C, and also C++, but that's not why I'm, what I'm doing. So, what is undefined behavior? There are operations that aren't defined by the C standard, which means um, you can do them, but there's no there's nothing that the compiler has to do in this case. The compiler can do whatever it wants. Like, let's say, accessing an undefined variable. Or, uh, well, an uninitialized variable, I mean. Um, the compiler can do whatever it wants. What it usually does is just take whatever uh, value is, uh, is written in memory at that particular point in time. It could also, like, zero it out, but it could also let your program crash or do other things or mi misbehave in, in another manner. It's totally up to the compiler. Other examples are ex uh, dereferencing a null pointer. Um, going o over the um, bounds of an array, overflowing a, a, a signed integer, and so on and so forth. So, what does this mean to you in practice? When you do stuff that relies on undefined behavior, then then in some ways your entire program is undefined in its behavior. Uh, for example, some people do security checks to check if some condition um, that would cause undefined behavior um, is true. And in this case, the compiler might Cause, uh, might cause your program to not work and your security check to not work uh, and this might be an extra security problem like if you're calculating uh, the length of a buffer you want to copy and an overflow occurs in the calculation of the length then this might be a serious security issue because um, uh, some portions of memory that you don't want to leak might get leaked, or someone might inject shellcode using that. So, let's look at an example. This is an example taken from a bug report made back in 2007 on the GCC bug tracker. Um, a German blogger called Fefe filed a bug report um, that uh, a newer revision of GCC broke his code. Well, not his code, but uh, one of uh, his clients or something like that. I'm not sure where, where he had this code from. And he was complaining that the compiler completely removed his check for signed integer overflow. Um, this example I'm, I'm presenting here isn't the exact same code that FIFA posted, but it's very similar and it, it's based on the same principle. So, let me explain this example. I'm defining an integer a that's one less than the maximum integer. <coughs> Then I want to check if when I um, add 100 to it, the integer will overflow. So I make the assumption that when I add 100 to an integer that, that is too big, the integer will overflow and will be a negative number that's actually less than the current number. Like here, um, a plus 100 is less than a, which, which relies on this causing an overflow to actually trigger 
this condition. So if I de detect this overflow, I'm printing that an overflow was detected and return one as, as exit status, like some error code. And if no overflow was detected, I'm just printing the value of a plus 100 and return zero. So what do you think will happen when I actually compile and run this code? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, first, with optimization level 1, which doesn't do that, that many um, optimizations. So, let's take a look. Well, yeah, an overflow was detected. And that's it. The check for overflow worked perfectly. No problem whatsoever. Okay. Now, let's compile it uh, again, but with another optimization level. Namely, two. Two thus more aggressive optimizations than one. Now, what will happen? Well, the overflow test didn't work. And the overflow actually occurred nonetheless. As you can see, it's a negative value. So, although the overflow did happen, it's not like the undefinedness of the overflow made it not happen. Um, it, it almost looks like it didn't happen here, but it did happen here. And this is important to know when you're programming C, that when something is undefined doesn't mean it, it behaves the same way all the time. It's not like it didn't overflow, it, it, it would overflow here and here at the same time, or not overflow here and not overflow here at the same time. It may be that it overflows here and doesn't overflow here or the other way around. It's, it's totally up to the compiler. The compiler can do whatever it wants. So in this case, let me explain from the perspective of the compiler why this overflow was the detection wasn't happening. So I'm the compiler now and I look at this condition and see, well, a plus 100, mathematically speaking, is always bigger than a. So why even bother checking this? Because it's always false, right? There's only the one case that this condition isn't false, namely when an overflow occurs. But the overflow is undefined behavior, so the compiler uh, can do whatever it wants. So it says, well, when it's undefined behavior, I'm just ignoring this case and um, treating treating this like uh, it simply is always false. So zero in C. So what do we have now? If zero, do something. Well zero is always zero, so this is dead code and I can com uh, complete remo uh, completely remove it. So the compiler, after optimizing, produced this code. Well, maybe the compiler also um, inlined this uh, variable right here and whatever, but yeah. So this is what happened to the security check. It completely vanished just because it relied on undefined behavior. So, what did we do wrong here? The mistake in this check is that we first created undefined behavior and then checked if it happened. It's like you dereference a null pointer and try to check it afterwards if it was dereferencing a null pointer. Your program has already crashed at the time. Or like you write over your array bounds and after you wrote uh, over your array bounds you checked if you did it but it's already too late. The attacker has already taken over your system. So 
how can we do this properly? Well, let's check if an overflow will happen by checking if it will happen and not creating it itself. Like, let's take the maximum integer, subtract 100, and if a is bigger than the, the maximum integer minus 100, then obviously when we add 100 to it, it will be bigger than int max, which would be an overflow. So when we do this, this line is totally fine. Totally defined behavior. Nothing wrong with it. So we can rely on this to work even on higher compiler le uh, optimization levels. Well, let's test it. Let's do the same thing again. Run the test. Overflow detected. With a higher optimization level, the highest possible. Still detected. This is how to properly write this overflow detection. So, now you might ask, why even bother building undefined behavior into the language? And there are multiple answers to this question, but one thing is uh, like the, the signed integer overflow behaves differently on different processor architectures. Like um, the x86 architecture used in most desktop PCs normally uh, does this overflow by wrapping around and uh, beginning at negative numbers. But there are also under, uh, other um, processor types that handle the overflow differently like um, creating a trap which is um, either crashing or calling some handler function or whatever and others that um, just don't just let it stay at um, int max and not get any bigger and whatever so by not defining those kinds of behavior in the C standard, it means that on architectures that behave differently than, uh, uh, than what people are expecting, the compiler doesn't have to create additional code to ensure behavior like, like the overflow um, going all around. Like let's say, if we have a, if the C standard would define that integers are wrapping around, then on a processor that doesn't have this behavior natively, the, the compiler would have to create code that first checks if an overflow will occur. If overflow will occur, thus the wrapping around, and then go on. So every single addition or subtract, or subtraction or multiplication of integers would have one if statement created that checks for an overflow and then does the wrapping, which is totally nuts from a performance standpoint on those kinds of processes. So one reason for the existence of this undefined behavior is really the, ex uh, the existence of different processes and um, it having to pe be performant on all of them and being portable to all of them without the program suddenly running five times uh, um, slower. There are other languages like Java that enforce this kind of behavior and that have to create additional code for it. <coughs> Another reason why this undefined behavior uh, can be great is for optimizations. This is what the compilers do. Like, let's say I have this loop. Um, let's say int n is uh, equals um, 100. For int e equals 0. e less than n. Less equal n. e plus plus. <coughs> now do something. <clears throat> now, 
if overflow wasn't defined behavior, let's say we have this case int n is int max, then I would ho always have to check if I will overflow when performing this operation. But in this case the compiler can, can optimizations like well i equals 0, i less than or equal n, i plus plus, well this loop will exactly get um, executed n plus 1 times. So do something n plus 1 times. And there's all only this one exception when n equals the maximum integer that this will be an infinite loop. But if n is the maximum integer then once i be becomes the maximum integer the plus plus is undefined behavior so the compiler can still say well it's not an infinite loop but it will be executed um, one uh, in, in max plus one times and this saves us from um, creating uh, this saves the compiler from creating code that checks for the overflow every time and can just unroll the loop and, and do something uh, a, a certain amount of time like create code um, similar to um, while um, in, e, in i equals n plus 1 while i bigger than 0 do something i minus minus like it's not the same i it's it's just some register that the processor uses um to 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 count the loop but you can calculate the the actual value li of i like let's let's call this counter and i is now i equals 0 plus um, n plus 1 minus counter, something like that. So, I, I, I don't know what the compiler would actually do in this case, but um, let's say we don't have those checks for the overflow. In simple loops, there might be like a 50% performance increase or more and there are more cases like that where we can just eliminate dead code and, and stuff like that to optimize it further. So if the undefined behavior wasn't there and the compilers wouldn't use it, many applications would probably be um, less uh, the speed that they are currently. So while it's really sad when you're programming C because you never know when in, this, in the future some compiler will break your code because you might have some, uh, used undefined behavior somewhere, um, it's, it's still necessary sadly. There are under other languages that don't have this, but for the applications the, uh, if, um, that C programs are used in, it's mostly necessary. <coughs> so what can we do about it? Let's go back to the initial example. In this case, one thing we could do is use Clang's undefined behavior sanitizer. So <clears throat> just just to tell you about that, it, it doesn't work to just enable compiler warnings whenever undefined behavior is used for optimizing th something. 
this has different reasons like it's it's hard to track down the undefined behavior that caused an optimization because the optimizations happen on intermediate uh, all, all um on in some occasions happen on intermediate representations that aren't easy to uh, map back to the original source code <coughs> and also they happen on stuff after the preprocessor was running so after macros were um, expanded and also after functions were inlined like maybe multiple times inlined multiple times after uh, so it's really hard to uh, it would be really hard to understand those warnings or make them in a way that they are understandable by humans and also there would be so many warnings because there are so many optimizations made in even simple programs <coughs> that you, you would be totally flooded and you wouldn't see the bad ones you, you can't distinguish the bad ones from the good ones so what you can do is find out if your uh, if your program at runtime is using undefined behavior so let's say you have a test suit with many checks that you run after uh, after um, compiling your uh, program to test if it works you can run it using the undefined behavior sanitizer uh, from LL LLVM you can do it like clang equals and uh, not equals clang dash f sanitize equals undefined and also integer for um, detecting uh, integer overflows then compile your code like test.c dash o test well that's bad so I found what I, what I was doing wrong um, I had a typo it's just clang dash f sanitize equals integer undefined test.c dash o test now when we run test we get runtime error in line 7 which is this one at position 8 which is let's see well it's <laughs> it's this um, parenthesis um, which this number plus 100 cannot be represented in type int and this is really 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 helpful when you have a large code base and you just want to check um, on normal usage like in the test cases does my program rely on undefined behavior you can't find strange edge cases but you can at least find out if there is undefined behavior that you act that you actively rely on and that <coughs> will potentially break when changing the compiler or, or the platform or whatever. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting and I think this is something that everyone programming C should know about because it's actually quite scary. <laughs>